Rowing up some cheaper. Row it, row it, row it. Row it. Rolling up some cheaper. When the bus gets to the Thanks for rolling up, Two Belt Marley. This is Certified Pothead. I spoke it all. One of my, uh, night, nighttime, nighttime spliffs. You know, we about to do Bird Club. We about to jump into these cannabis conspiracy theories, which I like to call cannabis conspiracy theories. Today's theory is about the Trojan horse. So buckle up, history buffs, because what I'm about to reveal will make you rethink everything you learned about ancient history and probably make you hungry for snacks. Forget what you know about the Trojan War. The wooden horse wasn't full of Greek soldiers. Nah, bruh. It was stuffed to the brim with cannabis. That's right. The Greeks didn't just win through cunning tactics. They got the Trojans too baked to defend themselves. Let me walk you through this step by step because I can already see the skepticism in your eye. But trust me, this theory is as solid as the Parthenon. That's, that's probably not how you say that. Or at least it's sturdy as a clay pot balanced on the donkey's back what happens when brute force fails picture this the greeks have been sitting outside troy's walls for 10 long years trying everything from full frontal assaults to passive aggressive letter writing hope you're enjoying the siege love od sisters they've thrown everything at the trojans and it's not working the walls of troy are impenetrable as the plastic wrap you can Never get off leftovers. What is a frustrated army to do? Enter Odysseus, the guy who could talk his way out of a cyclops cave. After a few long nights of brainstorming and probably a few too many drinks, Odysseus says, what if we don't fight them? What if we just chill them out? Cue the bird for the world's first weed war. Here's a riddle for you. A wooden gift at the city's gates are filled with danger, sealed by fate. Once inside, the city falls. And all the warriors climbed my walls. What am I? That's right. They constructed a giant horse and crammed it full of the finest herb Greece had to offer. It wasn't a tactical weapon. It was a Trojan War version of a care package from Snoop Dogg. They called it Operation High Horse. Let me tell you, it was brilliant. In the battle of wits, the Greeks had already won. And they were about to smoke the Trojans literally. Why settle for a normal war when you can... Think outside the box or horse. When the Greeks left the horse at the gates, the Trojans were understandably suspicious. A gift from the Greeks? It smells fishy, said one skeptical Trojan. Well, he wasn't wrong. It didn't just smell fishy. It also smelled a bit skunky. But let's be real. After a decade of war, the Trojans were just desperate for anything that didn't involve flaming arrows. So they brought the massive horse inside the city, figuring it was Either an olive branch or the weirdest piece of home decor they'd ever seen. As they dragged it through the gates, a Trojan general quipped, Well, if this doesn't end the war, at least we'll have the most ridiculous lawn ornament in all of Antonelia. Here's another riddle for you. Kill the prince at my feet he fell. A son of Troy, a hero they tell. By Apollo's help, I hit him true. And now it's my name, that hero's rule. Who am What's worse than an impenetrable city in impenetrable fall? Here's where things get hazy. Once inside the city, the Trojans naturally start poking around the horse. One curious Trojan, probably named Hector McSnoop, cracks open the belly of the beast and, surprise, finds mountains of weed inside. At first, they thought it was some kind of Greek packing material. You know, like those little peanuts that get everywhere. But soon they realized it was something far more interesting. Someone lit up a sample to see what it did. And before you could say Achilles Hill, the entire city was under a cloud thicker than Zeus's worst storm. What happened next was the stuff of legend. The once vigilant Trojans who had stood guard over their city for a decade were now lounging around like they just discovered Netflix. Soldiers abandoned their post to join drum circles. Generals were holding philosophical debates about whether Achilles was more of a sandal guy or a barefoot dude. The palace guards, they were busy trying to build a snack pyramid out of figs and honey cakes. Here's another riddle for you. I was dipped in the river but still had a flaw. In battle, a poison arrow met my paw. Who am I? You ever wonder if war is just a really bad way to throw a party? Ten years of siege warfare, which is basically like having a 
really, really long neighbor dispute. Only instead of yelling at each other over the fence about whose chariot is parked on the wrong side of the wall, you're chucking flaming aerials. Aerials. I'm telling y'all, bro. I'm telling y'all, bro. I'm gonna stop saying words. You're chucking flaming arrows and shouting about honor. It's exhausting. No one can live like that. Then suddenly, this big wooden horse with a enticing aroma right out front. If you're a Trojan, when you think maybe the Greeks are finally coming around, maybe this is like the ancient world's version of we cool now. I mean, it's either that or it's the Trojan War equivalent of those edible arrangements you get from your aunt. It's at this point that you realize history might not be as glorious as it seems. Wars aren't always won by bravery and strength. Sometimes they're won by people just being done with it all. I'm talking about the moment when everything the most hardened warrior is just like, you know what, forget the shield, let's just vibe for a bit. Maybe Achilles isn't that bad after all. What's more dangerous than an army, a city full of stoners? With the Trojans thoroughly incapacitated, the Greeks sailed back under the cover of night and by cover, I mean a thick haze of cannabis smoke. They watched into Troy like they were showing up for a toga party. Trojans, too high to care, probably waved them in. Hey, you guys want to join in the feast? One Trojan might have said, blissfully unaware that the Greeks were about to give him the historical equivalent of, <laughs> we about to break this up. Here's another riddle for you. I foretold it all, but none believed. My prophecies ignored. My words deceived. Troy fell as I said that it would. But my warnings did no good. Who am I? This wasn't your average war. It was the ancient world's equivalent of a surprise party where no one cared that they weren't invited. And let's not forget, the Greeks probably didn't have to raise a single sword. After all, it's hard to have a battle when your enemy is busy contemplating whether the stars are actually just Zeus's night lights. Is there a lesson here? Maybe, but it's probably not what you think. At the end of the day, the Trojan War didn't really end in a glorious battle, but instead it came down to one undeniable truth. Sometimes wars are won because people are just too tired, too confused, or too stoned to keep fighting. The Greeks didn't outsmart the Trojans with tactics. They won by giving them exactly what they needed, a break, peace offering, if you will. And sure, maybe the Trojans should have known better, but let's be honest. When you've been under siege for 10 years and someone drops off a giant wood, wooden horse, weed wooden horse, who's really going to question it? At the end of the day, the Trojan War wasn't about glory or honor. It was about knowing when to chill out. And that, my friends, might just be the most valuable lesson history has to offer. The answers to the riddles. The Trojan Horse, Paris, Achilles, Cassandra. I'll see y'all on the next one, bro.